how many miles should you train before running an ultra marathon and how many is too many today i'm going to share my experience racing over 2700 miles to help you build your own training schedule Running an ultra marathon is actually not that hard, but what's really difficult is to get the training right. When you're training for an ultra marathon, you're trying to balance two things. One is to increase your fitness and your resistance to the beating that you will uh, have during the race. But at the same time, you want to minimize the risk of injuries, especially during training. And it's very easy to push too hard and then injure yourself. The most likely reason people fail to train up to an ultra marathon is actually injuries it's not because they give up it's because they push too hard injure themselves and then they're not able to race on race day so having a more structured approach is very helpful especially when you're a beginner and you're not so sure is 20 mile too much for me or not the other advantage of having a training plan is that it's very easy to monitor your progress what has worked what has not worked and the last thing that i really want to emphasize is that a training schedule is not gospel I think you should always adapt it to your own life situation. If you're busy at work, you have some um, commitment with your children or anything like that, well, life is more important than your training. So adapt your schedule to your life circumstance in general and also to your body. If you feel that you're getting injured, dial it down. It's, it's the worst thing that you could do is, well, today it said that I was supposed to run 20 miles, so I'm running 20 miles despite feeling injured, and then you aggravate an injury. Before getting into the details of what should you do Monday, Tuesday, how many miles, a key question is how many miles should be your total weekly mileage? You will see out there people running crazy amount, 150 miles a week. Honestly, I don't even think all professionals do that and there's really no reason. Personally, I never go above 90 miles and typically my kind of sweet spot is 70 miles to train for 100 miles. You could, for example, a 50 mile, I think 40 to 50 mile weekly mileage will probably be plenty enough to perform very well and have a very good day. Could you do it with less? Yeah, maybe. Could you do it with more? Yeah, maybe. It will depend on you in both directions. But before that, you need to increase gradually. So where to start? Well, it depends where you are right now. Are you able to run a marathon or not? And you'll build your first week according to that. And calculate the number of weeks that you will need to ramp up slowly. And ramping up slowly, it's adding something like two, three miles per week or 10%. Um, I tend to be more conservative. And you might even not want to do your training schedule on mileage. That's the easiest to discuss, but you can always do the translation. What you could use instead is the amount of time on your feet. Go out for two hours of training and building that gradually instead of a total mileage. The other aspect is that we will often put a pace and really what that translates is, is this a fast run, is this a slow run? But you could also go by effort. So either by perceived effort, which is personally what I usually do, but you could also go by heart rate. So staying, we say a lot, the zone two is pretty important. It probably doesn't come as a surprise, but if you want to run an ultra marathon, your training is a lot of running. But just because I talked a lot about the running specifically in the schedule just keep in mind this is just part of the training so it's good within your schedule to include things like strength training so the the, the, the typical rate running that you will do are divided in my mind in really two categories one is low intensity high volume and the other one is high intensity low volume so basically it's your long run and then the other part of that will be a high intensity and why do you add that if you're just going to run slow during your ultra marathon why add intervals or hills it's going to really build your resistance in general and it's just important to have them but don't overdo it uh, personally i know that intervals is one of the things that has the highest risk for me of injury so when i do some i'm extremely careful then the high intensity could be as i mentioned intervals could be speed workout could be hills training i think if you're doing an ultra marathon it's pretty hilly you can add some things that are more specific like hill training power hiking uh, that's going to help you a lot face uh, what's going to be on race day everything is important but the long run is very very important so why don't you come with me on my long run before Badwater 135. All right, we're on the Badwater course 
and today we're gonna do a long run. Let's go! Long runs, they're your bread and butter of your ultra training. You really need to prioritize those and they serve a lot of different purpose. But at the end of the day, you're building mileage, you're getting stronger. And that's something that you just cannot replace. A lot of problems that could happen during race day will actually emerge on the long run. Things like chafing, being able to hydrate, fuel, all of these things you can train your shoes, your gear. I'm dressed the way I will be dressed for bad water right now. You leave nothing to chance on race day because on race day, things won't go according to plan. So you want to minimize the number of unknown so that on race day, the problem solving you're doing is for things that you couldn't have prevented that. When you're doing your long run, it can be tempting to do them as fast as possible. But just remember the 80-20 rule. I know there's a lot of 80-20 rule, but the one I'm referring to is the one stipulating that you should have 80% of your mileage in your training at a slow pace and only 20% at high intensity. Some training plans sometimes will have you do back-to-back -back long runs. Personally, I recommend doing that in the weekend. If you're working a Monday through Friday, sure, your second run, the 20 mile, the goal is to run these 20 miles with tired leg. There's a goal to the first one. And it's not only to get tired for the next day. In fact, the first run, the goal is to see what's the pace you should go if you want to stay fresh. Typically, I try after my long run to feel fresh like a pickle and sometimes that means that I will be tired afterwards and I'll go to sleep or take a nap but if I do my back-to-back -back long runs I try to have my first long run feeling fresh like chocolate ice cream you often hear new runners sometimes say how do you do it, it sounds so boring and really my response to that is well it's not so boring if you do it with someone who's not boring. And well, they're like, but aren't you running by yourself? It's like, yeah, exactly. You know, be in your head, be in your space. And that's something to practice. Another thing you need to be careful about with your long run is that if you increase them to the mileage too fast, you have a risk of injury. So watch out for that. One last thing is, I don't think there's any value in doing a long run that is longer than 30, 30 miles. Like, honestly, I never do even a marathon in training anymore. The reason for that is that at some point, you just increase the risk of injuries. You're getting little actual physical benefit and your body is just taking too long to heal. So you're not really getting the advantage of doing your long run. Well, all right, I'm done with my long run. I stopped like literally five seconds ago. As you can see, I look pretty fresh and that was the goal. I think I said before fresh, I think it was ice cream. I'm fresh like ice cream, which actually sounds pretty good. I, th I think I'll go get ice cream. Um, yeah, I mean, and that's it. It's, it's not more complicated than that, but the big 
thing to remember is long run are probably the most important thing in your training schedule there is much more and there is more than just running but without the long run you very much will struggle because not only you're training your body but you're also training your mind and you're testing your gear and you're learning and gaining experience that will help you during the race all right so now let's talk specifics Go get yourself a pen and paper or your computer. You're going to organize it by weeks. And I think if you're training, for example, for a 100 mile, you could think of going back half a year uh, for building that. But obviously, where you start in terms of fitness might vary how long you need to prepare for a race. There's different types of week that you're going to do. Some the, the most common type will be what I would call a build week, which is you're increasing mileage slowly compared to the previous week. And the system I usually do myself that has worked extremely well, that has led to me doing a 16 hour, 18 minute, 100 mile, was to do three weeks of build period, one week of reduced mileage. Up until I had the mileage that I was looking for, and then I had a block of three weeks that I would describe as maintaining, which is I'm maintaining the highest mileage that I was looking for peak, doing that for three weeks, and then I revert back to a reduced week, and then it's taper, and then it's race day. Now, how is the week organized? Well, first, there's a lot of people doing run streak. That's great. If you want to do that, I'm not encouraging that. But you should definitely have some rest. And even people doing uh, run streak typically have days that they run less or less intensively. Personally, I favor just a full rest. And at the beginning of your training, maybe you have two rest days. Depends really where you are in your fitness. But towards the end, personally, one day of rest is enough for me and I usually put it after my back-to-back -back long run. So build your schedule from the end, where you want to go, and then we'll find a way to get there. That's how you're going to build a training uh, schedule. And sure, you can go online and find some templates, but I really think that you will gain a lot first by doing it yourself because it's going to be personalized, but also you're going to understand what actually is in your schedule and understanding that will help you tweak it uh, favorably to to match your schedule or whatever happens in your life so we go to the last week and we said 70 miles maybe is the goal that you're looking for if you're doing 100 mile and what you're gonna do is you're gonna put the back-to-back -back long runs I do it Saturday Sunday because these are my days off if you have a similar schedule just do that back-to-back -back long run how many miles should that be it should be a number <laughs> that when you see it for the first time it's like huh well, that's a lot, <laughs> but it is it, it is something that you'll get to, uh, and you, you can think about. I, I think I look for about maybe thirty percent or forty percent of my weekly mileage will uh, even more, maybe even fifty percent of my weekly mileage will actually be in that weekend sometimes, and then you build it backwards. So, how do you get to say a twenty mile as your last week? Well, okay, the week before, well, the three weeks of maintain is the same but before that well it's 19 the, the week before the, the the pace at which you're increasing that will decide how many weeks you need that's where I ask for half a year I think is reasonable now your Saturday Sunday goes up all the way to the beginning um, these numbers should be something that you feel you could tackle if that's not the case then it seems that you might need to have a few more weeks of preparation to actually build up to that as I mentioned I think the day after the back-to-back -back long run it's great to rest and it's not just because you're you're a little bitch you know it's because your body is not getting stronger while you're running obviously your body is getting stronger while you're resting and that's where sleeping a lot is important eating well is important and having rest is important think about it as fixing for example a plane uh, you could try to fix the plane while it's flying but I think it's more advisable to just land the plane <laughs> then fix it. It's the same thing with the boat. If you have major damage, you might want to go in a dry dock. If you're repairing a road, you might want to close it to circulation. Well, that's what we're doing. We just did something that's pretty intense on Saturday, Sunday, your back-to-back -back long run. Now let's build yourself back. Give yourself one day to, to heal. Then you'll want to have some high intensity. Now, as I mentioned, that's the highest risk thing. You might want to not go all in especially if it's your first uh, ultra marathon but trust me it's really gonna help you a lot when you're climbing these hills it's really gonna build your strength that will make you be able to finish the race it's not just about winning or doing good times but these intervals and these speeds workout will help a lot and what I will do is I want to be able to have that when my body is relatively fresh so it's it could be a good idea to put it for example Tuesday and uh, Thursday 
and you're going to put that to a fairly low mileage. And there's the 80-20 rule that I mentioned during the long run. So you can just try and put the mileage that will fit that 20% of your weekly mileage is actually these two days divided by two. And then what you have left, left is your Wednesday and Friday. At the beginning, maybe Friday, take the day off. That's really going to help you build your back-to-back -back long runs. But eventually, introduce a little bit of mileage there. Just a normal run, normal pace, just building the weekly mileage, similar to Wednesday. Uh, it's, it's kind of a not full on workout on Wednesday and Friday because you just had a speed workout. What, what did I do? Yes. And then your big day is coming, the race is coming, what should you do? Well, that's what I would call a taper week. And a taper week, you're not going to get stronger in that week. What you're trying to do is get your body fully recovered and you can take one week, maybe two weeks, you're not losing fitness that quickly. So you don't have to worry about it. I put some mileage usually and it's more of a nerve thing. I want to get moving a little bit. I want to keep loose, um, but just don't overdo it. It's slow mileage, low intensity. The other special week is the week after the race and I'm going to make a video eventually about how I recover because I think that's one of the things I'm actually extremely good at. Uh, when you look at my racing schedule, I'm racing 100 mile every three weeks so really I need to heal very quickly and I take about a week which is reduce mileage, just do what you can to stay loose. Active recovery is pretty important so keep moving, walking, things like that and your body will tell you if you should just dial it down a little bit. But when you're building your, your, your schedule, keep that in mind that at least for a week afterwards, you, you're, gonna, you're gonna be hurting. It can be also a good idea, especially if you don't necessarily have a lot of experience racing, to include a practice race before your real race. So if you're doing your first 100 mile, you could do a 50 mile or just to test your gear, uh, just to, to mentally be prepared for the big event. You're using that as a learning experience, not as your key racing. And what's important about that is that when you put it in your schedule, remember that you have to taper for a week, you have to recover for a week. Also running, uh, there's a big difference to, to marathon running uh, that you have to keep in mind, which is you have to change your mindset. Uh, the mindset of marathon is you have to do the best all the time it needs to be optimal you're supposed to run 5.2 miles on that day well it's 5.2 miles it's not 5.3 it's not 5.1 well ultra running is much more of a duct tape kind of let's fix it let's solve problem it's never gonna be perfect but it's gonna be good enough work gets crazy I'm not even able to put any mileage ah! that's fine that's fine the training doesn't need to be perfect just relax take a deep breath We'll find a solution. I'm really trying to provide you more with the tools to build a training schedule than tell you this is the training schedule. I hope it's appreciated. Uh, that's definitely how I'm going to do my videos in general. And um, it's really the, the, the principle of flexibility will really help you on the long term. I know it can be a little bit frustrating that I'm not telling you you should run eight miles on that day, uh, but rather teaching you how basically to fish instead of giving you a fish. Is that the saying? I'm sorry, that's where. I'm more French speaking than English speaking. Thanks for watching. If this was helpful, please leave a thumbs up below. That's really helping me a lot. In the future, I'm going to cover other topics that you've mentioned, such as nutrition. Feel free to request anything in the comment below.